welcome to the Mighty Show. This is our very first episode of the Mighty Show. Um, recording it here at the King's Palace in Oslo. My name is Isaac, and today I am with uh, Brother Kenneth. He will tell us more about himself. But the topic of discussion is um, security. Ken, you're most welcome. Thank you very much. Talking about security mm. and um, the state of mm. affairs in, yes. in Kenya at the moment. Yes. But before we go there, tell us about yourself. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, uh, Brother Isaac. It's a big privilege to be on um, this station, mm. and uh, especially to get an opportunity to film this uh, video here at the King's Palace. My name is Kenneth, as you have seen. I'm uh, from Kenya. And uh, I am the chairman of the Kenyan Students Association here in Norway. Um, amongst other things that I do, of course, I'm also a Christian and uh, born again for that matter. Yes. Um, of course, we cannot talk about the Garissa attacks yeah. without mentioning Christianity. Yes. Um, it was clearly reported mm. in the media that yes. uh, the culprits, those mm. terrorists, mm. picked out Christians yes. and specifically prioritized killing them, um, which is an issue we wouldn't want to dwell on so much. Mm -hmm. But taking it up from there, what do you think that brings in, in, into perspective in, in terms of security uh, for Christians mm -hmm. living in Kenya and around the world? Uh, thank you very much. Um, once more, um, looking at what happened in uh, Kenya and uh, Garissa, as you have seen, and also in view of what has been happening in other countries in the world, uh, even in Iran, Iraq, Pakistan, in Egypt, there has been a rise on uh, persecution of Christians. And um, of course, uh, this has been used in a way to scare away Christians from uh, Muslim-dominated uh, regions as a way of um, uh, having those places purely for Muslim um, people, people professing Muslim faith. And um, in Garissa, for example, um, it's a region that has many more uh, Muslims compared to the number of Christians. And um, Christians have also been making routes to that region. So probably their attack was a little bit more um, uh, choreographed to look like a a general, a normal attack, but then at the end of the day, um, push a certain agenda. So um, definitely, as you have pointed out, um, this is a university that had around 800 students, both Christians and Muslims, but then uh, the attackers went and depicted Christians only. There is also another view to that, that uh, the Christians are not... Um, uh, part of uh, the ethnic group in that region and therefore picking them uh, first as Christians and also as um, migrants, so to speak in that region speaks volume um, and it's something that uh, really has it's a very sorrowful thing to note that uh, people can uh, kill others to probably um, achieve an agenda um, very unfortunate Yes. Um, recently there was, uh, of course, it was very unfortunate mm. that so many innocent souls were lost yes. in that attack. Yeah. I, I can't bring myself to mm. even imagine yes. what it would have been like if I was part of mm. that terror experience. Yes. If I had been there, what, what would I have done? What? I don't know. I can't even begin to imagine it. Mm. Mm. But it has happened yes. and lessons have been learned. Mm. But let's, let's, it, let's take it up from... Mm. Um, was it 1997? 97, yes. When the, the first terror attack happened in Kenya. Mm. Um, what do you think? Were there lessons learned? What was done right? What was not done right? What, what do you think should have been done mm. after those two experiences, 1997 mm. and then um, mm. Westgate and, and all these others? Um, as you have pointed out, uh, Kenya experienced the first uh, terror attack in 1997, August uh, the 7th. 
but even before I speak a little bit about that, it's important to note that the glo uh, terrorism is a global thing. That there are attacks everywhere in the world today. And there has been a rise in the number of uh, terror groups and uh, terror attacks, uh, both in uh, Africa, in the um, Middle East, in America. And uh, the um, terror groups have been uh, coming up, the Islamic states, uh, now the latest. We have uh, the Boko Haram in Nigeria, we have the Al-Shabaab in Kenya, we have uh, so many Al-Qaeda and um, Taliban's. Um, the thing is, um, is there anything that should have been learned or done after the 1997 or after what has been happening previously? Uh, in my view that um, something of course should have been done and should be done. Um, but again, um, terrorist changes its figures, uh, the faces changes, the dimensions changes. The allegation for why they are doing that changes. And whereas you may probably try and do something to respond uh, to what was already done, then they come back in a different uh, out of it. When you have, uh, for example, um, maybe uh, responded and put in some um, measures to curve that uh, from happening, then again, something else happens. Um, um, again, um, in a different way. For example, a house is bombed today. You try and uh, put some um, uh, bomb detectors, you try to do and uh, put some um, security checkups, but then next time they come in a different way. In 1997, bombing, for example, was at the heart of the city, at the American embassy. The American embassy was moved out of the city. Um, after that, they started uh, now um, attacking or carrying out some terror attacks in um, uh, different places. Um, before the Galicia attack, there was a shopping mall, which was um, uh, the, the, the Westgate shopping mall, mostly um, visited or frequented by uh, visitors or foreigners. And before, Kenya was just suffering those attacks because of the foreigners and their relations with the foreign um, at the international community. But then now they have uh, changed the tact. When you may be thinking of those places, they go to universities. And as we speak now, after Garissa, there has been a lot of uh, things happening, a lot of uh, scares in uh, universities, institutions of learning, uh, and uh, also so many other places in um, Garissa institutions getting closed. So uh, this has meant things to really change and uh, to really um, change the dimension. So has there been a change in tact of uh, responding? Yes. Has there been something done? Yes. Is it enough? No. Still a lot need to be done. Yes. Uh, but then again, um, whether or not... Let's talk about the yes. current measures that the government has taken yes. to try and mitigate this problem mm, mm. of building a wall yes. at the border between Kenya and, and Somalia. Somalia. Yes. Do you think that is feasible? Um, in my view, it is something that uh, probably may help, mm. but it is not in entirely uh, up, uh, a sure enough thing to really rely on. Uh, still, um, whereas we may be thinking of terrorists coming out of the country, today we have uh, terrorists living within us. As a matter of fact, those who conducted the Gariza attack, uh, most of them were Kenyans. We are a Kenyan, we are a Tanzanian. So when you build a wall, then uh, uh, you restrict people from coming from outside. You have um, our Shabab sympathizers and support, uh, supporters living amongst you. So that in itself may not be sufficient. Of course, also the government has said that um, all the refugees should be uh, should go back to Somali. But again, uh, that raises a lot of questions So now do you handle um, the crisis that may come from that? Um, how do you manage to relocate a whole group of uh, over 600 people at once? So it's 
something that may look good but it's issues of um, uh, how effective it is then uh, only time probably will tell um, um, mm. you know terrorism is something complicated yeah. mm. we very much want to disconnect it from religion yes and as much as possible try mm. to disconnect it from Islam because mm. our Islam brothers yes. Uh, Muslim brothers and sisters mm. insist that yes. Islam is not a religion of war. Mm. But the terrorists, yes. they keep bringing religion into their activities. Mm. They bring Islam, they bring the Quran into yes. their activities. Yeah. How can we, as Christians, mm. deal with that? How should we perceive mm. the activities of terrorists? I think uh, we should perceive the activities of terrorists as, as acts of inhuman and uh, disassociate them, them with the Muslim. Of course, there has been accusations of radicalization and teaching of um, false uh, doctrines by, so to speak, Muslim um, uh, youth to Muslim youth by the Muslim uh, preachers in the mosque and all that. But um, I guess that uh, it is important to separate the two and to call upon the Muslim leaders to um, indoctrinate or to, 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 to teach the youth, especially those who have uh, those radical beliefs, the uh, real uh, teachings of Islam. Um, our Muslim brothers say that Islam stands for, faith, for peace and if indeed that is what Islam is about then they should teach their young people that there is nothing different from that. There are allegations that uh, when you kill or when you die in a quote, in court holy war when you are fighting for something you have a direct ticket to heaven and you have a promise of a uh, many good things, uh, including uh, seven or seventy virgins. Um, these are all uh, things that uh, really I don't think may be anywhere near the truth. So the uh, Muslim clerics should teach the young people uh, to practice faith that is devoid of violence and killing and destruction of uh, life and property, that they should be instruments of peace. And if indeed that um, it is true that uh, dying in a holy war um, is attracting or attracts any reward, then uh, I think they should define what holy war um, means. Um, I, I don't want to believe that in the modern world there is anything like holy war. Um, God does not and cannot tolerate a person, a human being, killing another human being. Yes. As we conclude, yes. uh, last month mm. uh, you organized, your, your association mm. uh, organized um, a memorial service. Yes. And, um, I was there. Yeah. What, what do you think the community here uh, would like the government in Kenya to do about, you know, security? Mm. Um, yes, after the memorial service that we had, um, of course, uh, many Kenyans, um, as you saw and as you said, you saw many Kenyans uh, came together and um, people put aside their um, ideological, their political, their religious, and whatever differences to stand together as Kenyans in solidarity with those who lost their life. Uh, but after that, of course, uh, there are a lot of things happening. Uh, people are calling on the government to take action. Um, calling on the international community to give more um, active support to the government of Kenya in fighting uh, terrorism. But even people themselves have uh, gone out of their way in supporting uh, the victims and their families. Um, people have made uh, contributions. 
which have gone long way in uh, supporting the families and uh, by the way um, as a focus that uh, has come from the media and uh, of course also after what happened so many governments have offered their support to the government of Kenya and the victims of the violence uh, the government of Italy um, gave a full scholarship to 25 of uh, those students that um, um, survived the attack and um, so many other governments have uh, responded in um, helping the survivors and uh, their families um, uh, re -re put back um, uh, their life. So um, yes, the, the memorial service was very significant in that um, it has really achieved some of those goals. Okay. Um, the Kenyan Association in Norway and the Kenyan Students mm -hmm. Association, yes. what message, speaking on, on behalf of those two organizations, what message do you send out to the Norwegian government and to the, the government in Kenya? Um, I've uh, sent in many times and uh, many occasions that uh, the international community, the government of Norway included, has a role to put hands together in fighting terrorism. Because uh, terrorism, as I said before, is a global thing. And therefore, that reminds me of a story of uh, the Jew and the Gentiles uh, and the um, priest. You remember when um, uh, people were being killed and uh, someone said, no, this time they are not killing um, the Gentiles, they are killing the Jew. And the Jews never did anything. And then after killing the Gentiles, they came uh, killing the uh, priest, and the priest never did anything. So when the last person was being killed, no one was there to support them. So it is time to support those countries, those regions that are suffering. Because uh, who knows what happens tomorrow? Let's put our hands together and support one another, support each other, support um, those countries and those regions that are suffering attacks today and have a safer world for every person. Uh, so on behalf of the Kenyan Student Association and on behalf of the Association of Kenyans living in Norway, that is my message that we should put our hands together in fighting terrorism in all its faces, in all its uh, in all places and fight as one united force because terrorism does not have a place in this world. Thank you very much for coming to the show, Brother Ken. Yes. Thank you so much too for having me and it's a good privilege to be here.